In this module, we're going to look at the Configure Backup Sets window, where we can learn about specific backup sets. Inside of Retrospect, to get to this window, you click on Configure on the left side, and then you click on Backup Sets. You choose your backup set, and then you click on Properties. Retrospect will then tell you information about that backup set. It'll tell you how many files exist in the backup set for the total size. It'll tell you how many members, how many sessions, and how many snapshots. It'll indicate that you have catalog file compression or what other op or any other option that may have been selected. We're not using password protection or security. It also gives us the path to the specific catalog file. We can click on options and then Retrospect shows some very specific options for this backup set. Keep catalog file compressed. With very large backups, your catalog file can grow to a very large size. So Retrospect has catalog compression which will make sure your catalog file is kept at the smallest possible size. Retrospect also has a button that says Action. Under Action, we can specify normal, recycle, new media, or new member backups. And with disk backup sets, we also have a Groom option. When we choose one of these options and click OK, Retrospect will immediately perform that action. If we were to click Reset, then Retrospect will completely clear the contents of the catalog file, and the next time the backup runs, Retrospect will start from the very beginning of the, very f of the first piece of media in that set. We're going to go ahead and hit Cancel. We also have grooming settings so that we can change our appropriate grooming. Snapshots. Retrospect will show us what snapshots exist inside the backup set. We can also see the sessions and the members. Under Members, we can learn information about the actual member. We can select the member of the backup set, click Properties, and inside there, it will show us information about the disk backup set. It tells us the amount that we're going to use as the maximum amount of space on the media. Retrospect will allow us to specify a new path. So if our backup set has moved from one disk to another, we can specify the location of the actual backup data. Then we can choose the new drive that our backup data is stored on and click OK. Then Retrospect will change the path to the appropriate location. We can also mark a member as lost or damaged. If you have lost the media that contains the actual backup data, you can mark it as being lost or damaged. By doing that, the next time you perform a backup, Retrospect will know that the media is unavailable and any files that were on that media will get recopied to the next piece of media in that backup set. We can also tell Retrospect to skip to a blank tape or a blank disk. Essentially, that means that if there is still free space on the first member or the current member of the backup set, you can force Retrospect to go to a second, third, or fourth member, depending on what the situation is. We're going to go ahead and cancel that, and we're going to go ahead and look at a different backup set. Specifically, we're going to look at backup set A and get properties. Here it shows us we have 144 files and we have 548 megabytes available. We have one member, five sessions, and three snapshots. Options, one of the options here is fast catalog rebuild. What that means is that at the very beginning of each member of the backup set, Retrospect copies a current version of the catalog file. So when I get to the second member, Retrospect will copy the current catalog file to the beginning of that second member and then it will start to copy new data. The purpose of Fast Catalog Rebuild is so that when you do a catalog rebuild, you can insert the last piece of media in the backup set rather than inserting the first piece of media, forcing you to read through every single member in that set. Snapshots, once again, we can see that Retrospect will allow us to view the different snapshots. Now I can choose a snapshot and I can browse it. And Retrospect will show us the contents of that snapshot. I can also simply select those items, make sure they're highlighted, and over here there's an option to restore. Retrospect will allow me to go through the restore process directly from within the backup set properties window. And this will do a retrieve files and folders of the data. We're going to go ahead and cancel that. And let's look at the sessions. Under sessions, we can also select a session and we can browse it. 
Retrospect will show us the files that were physically copied in that session. Under Members, we can select a member and we can mark it as missing. That way, if this piece of media has become damaged, Retrospect can recopy the files from that media to the next piece of media in the set. So Retrospect will scan the hard drive that contained the original files, identify that the 132 megabytes from the original disk don't exist anymore on the backup itself, and try and find those files off the hard drive, and then begin to copy them. 